Hi, this is Mike Braban from Interval Wellness Solutions. This is week three, the video on spirit and the spiritual aspect of our comprehensive well-being practice. And, you know, to start, I really want to acknowledge that, from my perspective, that part of us that longs for something more, not the sort of gathering more stuff or fame or stuff like that, but that, that sort of part of you that feels empty living in a way that just makes you feel smaller than something that you intuit is bigger inside of you. And I feel like that is where the seat of that motivation to practice, to change, to evolve comes from. And usually we're so busy focused on the external realities of our life and responsibilities that it's hard to listen to that voice that's always calling us forward. So I would define spiritual practice many different ways. One would be anything that you bring intention and awareness to. So this could be how you drive to work, how you speak to your children, how do you uh, do a myriad of things in your life. It could be anything. And eventually, from my perspective, things get to a place where your entire life is your spiritual practice. And another way to frame our spiritual practice is something that calms your mind, opens your mind, and opens your heart. So that could be something like you know, walking in nature or looking at art or doing something that really helps you sink into the present moment. And more direct lines towards that end are things like meditation. And I'm going to teach you a little bit of meditation at the end of this video. Uh, before that, I want to just give you a few kind of daily practices that you may want to try out and see if they work for you because you know, it doesn't necessarily mean as a spiritual practice you need to be sitting on a cushion for 30 minutes every day. You know, as much as that would be helpful, I think there's a real call for us to take what we learn and take that, that yearning to care for other people, the yearning to serve, to connect with others, and actualize that in our life. So here's a few small practices that I think would support you to that end. So one is to treat everybody the same. And that's not to say that you're going to talk to your boss the same way that you're going to talk to your children. Uh, but there's this kind of subtle hierarchy in our society, or not so subtle. Uh, it's almost like a caste system. You know, when somebody's on the street begging for money, you know, many people don't even look them in the eye, treat them as human beings. Or if there's somebody that they really respect or... You know, there's a celebrity, you know, we'll go goo goo over that celebrity, but we're not going to give that same respect to, you know, a school teacher or an activist, somebody who's making tangible difference in people's lives. Rather, we want to reify somebody whose society tells us is important. So it's important to see if we can see everybody the same. And part of that is seeing yourself in everybody else. It's kind of a foundation for this practice of treating everybody the same. Because whoever you come across, you can see suffering that they may be going through that somehow resonates with part of you, or some part of their experience, or just simply their humanness that you can relate to on some level. So that's one practice. Another practice was taught to me by a friend of mine it's called seeing through golden eyes. And what this is, is everybody has potentials inside of them that have yet to be realized. And so seeing through golden eyes is when you're interacting with anybody, you assume that they are more evolved than you. They're more developed than you. Everybody. And this does one of two things. If they are more developed than you, then that sort of acknowledgement or respect that you're paying to them is well-deserved. And if they're not as evolved as you, you treating them as such opens up the possibility for them to evolve into those greater potentials. 
And by seeing that greatness inside of them, you more readily are able to see that greatness latent inside of you. And it offers them the opportunity to be seen in the places where most people don't get seen. Usually we're, we're being treated by society at large as not being good enough, not being able to be enough on our own, so we need all this external stuff to feel better about ourselves or to be good enough. And the truth is, we have so much more inside of us than could ever be wanted. You know, the truth of your being is pure love. And when we can offer just a glimpse of that to somebody else, and in offering we receive a glimpse of that for ourselves, it can be a very beautiful gift and just take a few moments. So those are some general practices. And then I wanna teach you a little bit of meditation and there'll be some resources next to this video that you can also check out to give you some more ideas of what some practices could be and some ways to learn uh, new practices that perhaps you've never experienced before. So meditation posture is very important because when the body is tight, or when the body is kind of struggling to stay up, the mind can get more contracted. And meditation, on the beginning path of meditation, it's not about removing your thoughts. And so a lot of people that I teach meditation to, they think that it's about getting rid of your thoughts, and that's just simply not the case. It's about how do you create the spaciousness in your awareness through concentration practice that enable you to hold the arising thoughts and the emotions and the physical sensations and sounds outside of you, whatever it is, and keep that in the background and keep your attention focused on what you're focusing on, be it the breath or the body. So let's start with the posture. So ideally, you want to have your knees below your hips. So right now, I'm sitting on a bolster. That helps my hips get up higher than my knees. And so my spine can be effortlessly straight. And then relax the shoulders back down. And if sitting cross-legged doesn't work for you for more than like a second or not at all, sit in a chair. And either sit in the front part of the chair with your knees lower than your hips, or you can put a pillow or a blanket on the chair. You don't want to be leaning against the chair unless you have back issues and that's necessary for you. Um, and just a note about lying down. Lying down in meditation is fine. Um, and it takes a lot to train your body and your mind to stay relaxed while lying down and alert. So I don't usually recommend lying down for people unless they have really severe back injuries. Um, and then they're able to uh, not fall asleep. So much of meditation is about mixing these paradoxical notions of relaxation and alertness. So before we start, I want you to really um, find a sense of alertness in your mind. Whatever experience that you've had that has really supported you in having a very alert mind. Maybe that's a shot of espresso. You know, maybe that's um, just really being awake. You know, maybe like uh, when Christmas morning as a kid, you know, or some other holiday morning where you get really, really excited and you're just like so aware of everything around you. So that brightness is very important. That awakeness. Um, it's awakeness mixed with a relaxation, so it's not a tension, um, but it's just an awakeness, it's a presence. That you are here to feel what's, what's there, to see what's here. Another uh, helpful orienting metaphor for meditation is to hold a lion's gaze. So when somebody throws something in front of a dog, the dog goes and catches gets the stick or whatever it is. Somebody throws something in front of a lion. The lion doesn't look for where it went. The lion looks right at where it came from. And similarly, having that sort of regality of the lion, that strength, that presence, is another helpful orienting perspective or metaphor that's helpful in meditation. So as you have your lion's gaze and you have your awake mind, gently close your eyes. And I'll ring the bell after a few minutes and um, come out of it. 
So first just start by taking a few deep breaths in your nose and out your mouth. Letting any surface tension dissipate out of your body. Letting the sound of the passing train rise and fall in your awareness. And after your three breaths that are in your nose and out your mouth, let your breath just come back to a natural rhythm in and out of your nose. And continue to ground your energy, ground your awareness down into your legs, to your feet, and your pelvis. So you feel connected. You feel here. And after you feel connected to your body, I want you to start paying attention to your breath. So marry your awareness to the in-breath as it arises and to the out-breath as it falls. And try to stay connected all the way to the in-breath that rises and the out-breath that falls, like a circle of awareness. Now, when thoughts arise, simply acknowledge it. You didn't fail your meditation. Just acknowledge that the thoughts arose and bring your awareness back to the breath. And anything that's not the awareness of the breath is not the focus of your meditation. So acknowledge bodily sensations, acknowledge sounds, acknowledge thoughts, emotions, and bring your awareness back to the breath every time, compassionately and precisely. Keep your mind awake. Keep your lion's gaze focusing just on the breath, not on the content of thought or emotions. Slowly coming out of your meditation, opening your eyes. Okay, so that was a brief little introduction to meditation. And I encourage you to practice just five minutes a day, if you can. And set a timer so you don't have to think about it. And just set your lion's gaze. Have your mind awake. Have your posture set up so that it supports your meditation. And just follow the breath, just like we did with that sort of sincerity and dedication to following the breath and everything that's not. Just acknowledge when it arises and distracts you and brings you back, and bring yourself back, rather. So there will be a lot of different resources next to this video that you can go deeper in your exploration of what a spiritual practice could look like for you and uh, really develop this very crucial aspect of your wellness practice. So thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you next week when we talk about the shadow. Have a beautiful day.